Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Betrayal, desolation, and bitter disappointment awaited us all this week as it was revealed that tech companies, long thought to be the last bastion of trust and goodwill in this cruel world, have apparently been lying to and deceiving us with wanton disregard for our frail and delicate disposition. After waiting so long for graphics cards, Intel promised us graphics cards, but there are no graphics cards. AMD also said there would be new graphics cards out to celebrate the 69th International Nice Day on April 20th, but now they say not till May. And sure, technically both of those dates were just rumors, but Nice Day will now be marginally less nice, so don't let that fact quiet your obstreperous feelings of righteous indignation. Still, it's not good to stay too worked up. It's Sunday after all, so let's just cool things off with a cold brew. Let's see if we can find something rare. Pliny the Elder. It is a fine beverage, of course, but today I'm feeling a little different, so I think I'm gonna turn the clock back and have a little Pliny the Younger. Excellent! Today's video was brought to you by the Corsair K70 RGB Pro Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, powered by Axon Processing Technology and Genuine Cherry MX Mechanical Switches. This board packs its aluminum frame with features like dynamic per-key RGB lighting, a detachable USB Type-C cable, durable PBT double-shot keycaps, and IQ software support on both PC and Mac OS. You also get dedicated media keys, a multi-function volume roller, onboard storage for up to 50 profiles and more. So for further details on the Corsair K70 RGB Pro, click the sponsor link in the video description. Thanks to Jenny, by the way, who got this for me as a birthday present, and to all of you guys, cheers! We begin this week's disappointment tour with probably the most important thing that happened recently in the world of technology. I banged my head against an RTX 3090 two-way SLI setup for three or four days before finally getting it to work. And while the response to that video has been fantastic, and thanks to everyone who has watched it, liked, commented, etc., I must extend extra special thanks to viewers DEJ915 and Beyond4K here on YouTube and Purgatory underscore Nabil on Twitter, as well as anyone else who chimed in to point out exactly what was causing the problem. The original motherboard I used, the ASUS ROG Maximus Z690 Hero, does not support SLI. This came as a surprise to me, as every Z series board I've used going back 10 plus years to the Sandy Bridge era has come with that feature. Not because the chipset specifically enables it, but because the highest tier of hardware for a given platform naturally supported high-end features like SLI and Crossfire support, even though multi-GPU setups are rare these days. What is required for SLI support is an SLI key, which the motherboard manufacturer has to pay NVIDIA licensing for, and ASUS apparently decided you know what, for 12th gen Intel boards, we're just gonna save a few bucks and not bother. And while I might have forgiven them for going that route on their mainstream Prime or Tough Series boards, ROG, or Republic of Gamers hardware, is supposed to be their best of the best. The top tier premium offerings where ASUS specifically caters to niche or excessive hardware configurations where, in my opinion at least, SLI support should be bog standard. It's not like the ROG Hero is even entry level priced these days. That might have been the case for the Maximus 6 series when Hero first debuted in 2013 as a sub $200 Z87 offering, but ASUS is now charging uh, 600 bucks for the Z690 variant of the Hero in 2022. I say again, $600 for an ASUS ROG Z series motherboard that does not support SLI. And yes, admittedly, much of my frustration is because I happen to be in the small handful of people directly affected, but there's plenty of other upset clients on the ASUS forums who upgraded to Z690 only to find that now their SLI setup no longer functions. Official support from ASUS is only available on the Z690 Apex, which is $800, the Extreme, which is $1,100, or the Extreme Glacial, which is two grand. So you'd better be rich if you still want SLI support in an ASUS setup these days. Or maybe just go for an MSI board, because they apparently decided that paying for those SLI keys was worth it. And that's just the first among many tech deceptions this week. Next, we have Intel, who boondoggled me and countless other tech reviewers into echoing their narrative that ARC GPUs have launched. But have they? 
Intel, because from my understanding, launched products should be available for sale to the public. So it was understandable that quite a few people started to look for these supposed laptops with ARC 3 graphics chips in them since Intel's big launch event on March 30th, but lo and behold, none are available for sale. Even though this tweet from February 17th clearly says, uh, notebook, ARC GPUs Q1, desktop Q2, and workstation Q3. February, when this tweet was posted was not that long ago, and even here, we're giving Intel a pass on their older claims that ARC would arrive in 2020, then it was late 2021, and now this. Intel support replied to a Twitter inquiry by Game Union TV on Wednesday, and now they say end of Q2 2022? End of Q2 is beginning of Q3, Intel, and does that mean desktop GPUs now won't get here till Q4? I guess I'd feel a little bit less frustrated if it didn't seem like Intel made me and many other tech outlets their mouthpiece to disingenuously broadcast the end of Q1 Arc Mobile GPU launch that they were clearly trying to hit on paper at least, probably because of bonuses or stock prices or some other excuse for disseminating lies and deception. How unexpected though, what precedent even exists for Intel to promise a groundbreaking new product and then delay it over and over again until market conditions that would have been ideal had they met their original timeline deteriorate to the point that the public meets the eventual launch with jaded disillusionment instead of enthusiastic cheers. But don't get too down on yourselves, Intel graphics team. Try to stay positive. Positive. You know, like a plus sign. That's it. Maybe just add a plus sign to a product you already have out and then try to sell it as a new product with like a new number attached to it. Problem solved. Or maybe just solve it another way, like what you did on Friday. Launch these laptops, but apparently only in South Korea and not the rest of the world. Good plan, Intel. That's definitely going to work. Most of the people who want your products live in South Korea bit of a palate cleanser. Speaking of problems, it appears AMD had a problem with the originally rumored April 20th launch date for their RX 6000 series GPU refresh. Perhaps they were worried that people would have a hard time remembering things that transpired on that day. But regardless, the updated rumor points to May 10th as the launch date now. Images leaked by videocards.com appear to show the new reference card designs for the Radeon RX 6950 XT, RX 6750 XT, and RX 6650 XT. XT, which used the midnight black trim from the special edition RX 6800 XT that was briefly available for the current lineup of cards. Leaks indicate that the 6050 series refresh will pair existing GPUs with 18 gigabits per second VRAM up from 16 gigabits per second and might bump up TBPs and clock speeds as well. The entry level RX 6400 will likely also launch the same day, but nobody cares about that because just like your mom, a bargain basement price still can't make up for unsafe satisfactory performance. I, th I threw another mom joke in there, Joe. Speaking of things you shouldn't casually invest your money in, the RTX 40 series of GPUs from NVIDIA, if it will indeed be called that, is rumored to draw up to 600 watts of power for a single graphics card. Igor of Igor's Lab followed up on Monday with further analysis of the leaked PCB images that were shared with him, and now that the 3090 Ti is launched, there's a bit more info to play around with. To sum up, rumors that the GA102 GPU, the one used in the 3090 Ti, would be compatible with 40 series board designs is likely true, but not the other way around. And that's because the next gen ADA AD102 could pull as much as 450 watts just for the GPU, not including all of the other elements on the card that contribute to total board power or total graphics power. Compare that to about 230 watts that is used by the current RTX 3090, and you have a big old jump in power consumption. Now, Igor did do some extrapolation and estimations to arrive at this conclusion, so grain of salt and all, but he's been dead on with this kind of sussing out of data in the past. So now the question isn't if the RTX 40 series launch will be delayed like everything else I talked talked about today, it's should it be delayed to allow humanity time to perfect fusion reactor technology so we can properly power NVIDIA's next generation of graphics cards. Speaking of a mysterious force too dense and powerful for any one human to wield, it's time for tech briefs. AMD did make good on launching a handful of new CPUs this week with the Ryzen 7 5700X, the Ryzen 5 5600 and 5500, and the Ryzen 5 4500 launching on Monday. And notably, also going up for sale at retail outlets. <coughs> Intel. <coughs> Uh, the quick take here is that the 5600 is the only one worth a damn, finally giving us a solid current gen 
AMD 6 core in the $200 range like the R5 3600 of yore, and possibly there's some useful application for the 5700X for those in need of an 8 core as long as the 5800X isn't marked down to the same price. The 5500 sucks, it only has PCIe 3.0 and too little cache, and it gets stomped on in gaming by Intel's 12100, which is 20 to 40 bucks cheaper, and the 4500 just offends us all with its very existence. The 5800X 3D is the AMD CPU that many have their eye on, and it's still launching on International Nice Day 420, so that's when we'll get a full complement of reviews, once the proverbial smoke clears, of course. The impact of 3D vCache on gaming performance is starting to leak out, though, as Peruvian tech site Zanzo Gaming managed to buy a 5800X 3D at retail early, and since they're not under embargo, they're posting benchmarks. They've just done a couple so far, including Thursday update with some low resolution 720p Shadow of the Tomb Raider testing using an RTX 3080 Ti that showed a massive 21.5% improvement over the current best gaming CPU Intel's 12900K when compared to that CPU even with it using an RTX 3090 Ti. That's kind of crazy and impressive, but I would like to see comparisons using the exact same hardware. That will be coming soon. What's not impressive is Elon Musk, and not just because he so transparently wants everyone to think he's cool. Musk furthered his descent into cartoonish villainy this week by revealing that he has secretly been purchasing Twitter stock, to the point where he now owns 9.2% of the social media giant more than any other shareholder. Twitter responded by adding Musk to their board, and casually dismissing anyone who pointed out that valid criticisms about how free speech might be handled on their service probably won't be rectified by appointing a pseudo-libertarian man-child to their committee of directors simply because he's incredibly wealthy. Turns out that Musk might have broken the law too by doing this, just a teensy bit, since surpassing 5% ownership stake in a company requires you to tell the SEC that you're an active investor rather than a passive one, but those are just white-collar laws and those don't apply to billionaires. What does apply to billionaires, no matter how much they might bitch and moan, is the fact that you can't edit tweets on Twitter. Yes, it is the great equalizer, like it or not, but now even that bastion of impartiality is being assailed by Elon Musk, who, as Twitter's largest shareholder, has indicated that he will push for the feature to be added. Not so fast though, says Twitter. We were totally already gonna do that, and not because of Elon. See, we tweeted about it on April Fool's Day, but it's totally not a joke, and you should take us and our new board member seriously. Hey, maybe the CEO of Twitter could use that edit button to change this tweet he made that contradicts all of that that they just said. You know what would be sweet though? CPUs made of honey. Long have we dreamed that such sugary sustenance could be fashioned into a glutinous computing powerhouse, but the busy bees at WSU's School of Engineering and Computer Science have made it a reality by solidifying small bits of honey and turning it into neuromorphic memristors that live between a pair of electrodes, functioning in a similar way to human brain synapses. Sounds like a sticky solution, but it could potentially run cooler and more efficiently than current CPU manufacturing technology, and as a bonus, your CPU could be dissolved into a glass of tea and lemon as a quick home remedy for a headache or a sore throat. The Steam hardware survey went up this week for March, just in time for me to log my RTX 3090 Ti two-way SLI setup, in fact. Results are in now, though, and while my RTX 3090 Ti setup is still niche enough to be relegated to the other category, there was a notable shift in CPU choice for Steam gamers. For Windows-based systems at least, six-core CPUs have now taken a lead for the first time over quad cores. This category grew by 1.19% from February, hitting 34.22% of Windows systems polled, versus a paltry 33.74% for quad core systems that are still out there bringing shame upon their families. So yeah, I'm not sure who we beat or how we won, but we did it, guys. Good job. Now, I've vowed to continue giving Rockstar a hard time until GTA 6 launches, but I couldn't help but notice Tuesday's announcement. They're distracting themselves yet again by partnering with Remedy Entertainment to remake the iconic Max Payne and Max Payne 2, the fall of Max Payne games. And while the project is just in the concept stage at the moment, and there are undoubtedly fans of Max Payne who are excited about this news, it still grieves me to hear more Rockstar-related news that's not the next installment of GTA. One more bit of gaming news is about the next Tomb Raider, the follow-up to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is in development now and will be built using the Unreal Engine 5 
engine. And while no details on the game itself are forthcoming, whether it will be a sequel or a reboot, or yet another bold redesign of Lara Croft's character to highlight her gritty resourcefulness rather than her cone-shaped boobies, Crystal Dynamics' track record, as well as many of the new visual features of Unreal Engine 5, would seem to indicate that it'll be another worthy installment in the series. Speaking of cone-shaped boobies, I am all out of good segues for today, but I still have one more story to cover, and it's about Zuckbucks. That's right, Facebook is continuing their push into digital currency by giving it another go. After the 2020 investment in Libra, which then had its name changed to Diem, was officially abandoned in January, lasting less than two years. But why is it called Zuckbucks? Well, that's an internal name, and beyond that, the entire situation described in this article makes me want to gouge my eyes out. It's all about Facebook, scrambling to maintain its user base and relevancy as people flee to other platforms, attempting to conjure up value out of pretty much nothing, which also describes just about the entirety of Web 3.0 and NFTs in their current state. Guys, people are leaving. Let's see if we can get them to pay real money for internet stickers. I would say it's sad, but none of this information causes me to feel emotions of any kind. So I guess Zuck and I do have something in common. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, uh, click the like button because each time you do, I receive a feeling of warmth and fulfillment. Your feedback is always welcome. So please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. Check out my store at paulshardware.net as well for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. And while subscribing is not mandatory, me mentioning it as an option somehow is. So thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next week.